Today, I'm talking to Donna. Donna has tried every diet out there from low fat to cabbage soup. And it's only now that Donna has found the carnivore diet that she finally feels in control. This is an awesome discussion with Donna that I'm sure you'll want to stick around for. But just before we get into it, if you could do me a massive favor and please smash like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. It helps out the channel and it also helps me to be another voice out there talking about the carnivore diet. Thank you and let's meet Donna. Tell me, how did you find this way of eating? Well, if we really want to know and, and go back, uh, starting back in the 80s in middle school is when I became aware that I was not really the same size as all of the girls around me. I, I wasn't horribly obese, but I this is back when most people were not overweight. And I was overweight and I began, you know, in middle school going on every diet imaginable, you know, just the, the general salad diet. Uh, and then, you know, slim fast weight watchers. I did uh, Cliff Sheets and Larry North's lean bodies, which incorporated a lot of carbs. That was a metabolic disaster. Uh, I did the cabbage soup diet. I did the three day diet, which involved wine and ice cream. I mean, that sounds awesome, right? Not sustainable. <laughs> and uh, I did uh, so many other diets. And in wrapped up in all of that was the fact that none of these were nourishing me. I had always wanted to eat the fat on the steak, but you're told not to. And then if I was served mashed potatoes by my grandma, I, I just couldn't stop eating the mashed potatoes because I wasn't really getting what I needed. And not enough people knew about the proper human diet, as Dr. Barry calls it, uh, to know that you, you don't get fat by eating that animal fat. I just felt such shame by wanting those things. Uh, I felt shame by being bigger than the other girls, not as pretty, rejected, all of those kinds of emotional things, and um, didn't understand nutrition. And this continued I lost weight so many times and gained it all back. And this continued, well, I'm dealing with it now, to be honest. Uh, but I, I just kept looking for the next good diet. But the problem is that all of those diets were temporary. And you think, uh, well, I get to my goal and then I can eat whatever I want. But you're not really solving one of a multitude of problems, of course, when you do that. And uh, I had even done the HC HCG diet, which a lot of people demonize. I don't demonize that diet, uh, but I don't want to go back on it because it's very hardcore. Uh, in any case, I started uh, stumbling upon keto when I was coming off of what's called a round of HCG or phase two of HCG when you're having to build back into a normal eating routine. And a lot of people were mentioning keto. And I thought, well, that sounds right because it sounds nourishing. Uh, and then, then I stumbled across Jason Fung and I read his book, The Obesity Code, and it just felt like all these little lights started going off that, wait a minute, we can be nourished. So that was my first little wake up call is, is realizing that I actually could be healthy and nourished, well nourished. Uh, the problem for me as I began to slowly uncover then over the next few years is that I really am a carbohydrate addict and it's very it has many facets many layers to it and keto is too loose for me I need m much more specifics I need some guardrails uh keto I will I mean and right when I discovered keto is when big food companies also discovered keto and the cha-ching factor associated with that. And I was really a sucker for all of that keto candy bar, keto ice cream. So the problem, you know what, I'm thankful that didn't work because then I wouldn't have dealt with things that were leading me to run to that type of food for some sort of control or comfort. And then I was standing in the kitchen one evening and my husband said, 
you know what? That Jordan Peterson only eats meat. And I was like, that sounds hardcore. Sign me up. Sign me up. And so I started looking, uh, I did a search for Jordan Peterson eats only meat. And what I found was Michaela Peterson's interview with Ken Berry. And I watched it. And then I, as many of us do, fell down the Ken Berry rabbit hole. And then the Anthony Chafee rabbit hole and a couple of other big channels. And then some of the channels that were up and coming, I started following you when you had much fewer subscribers and became real. I mean, I found it. I needed to watch it every day. So I appreciate your channel very much. Uh, I And then I started looking at the studies because it felt right to me, but that was an intuitive feeling. And I knew that at some point or other, a doctor was going to be asking me about this and I needed to know more. And so I started looking at the studies that Dr. Barry would post and the scientific information that Dr. Chafee would post. And, and I thought the way that I have been wanting to eat since I was a girl is the way that's right to eat. And this just wanted to make me cry uh, with with happiness that and then also I won't have to throw away any more rotten vegetables. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can I can cook a steak, you know, cook some ground beef and eat it right then. And I'm done in five minutes with the cooking minimal cleanup. And there's no shame with this. I'm nourished. I've got vitality. Uh, and so that's that's how I landed with this way of eating. And it really feels like a miracle that I ended up here. And I guess I'm happy that I had the journey here because I know a lot about myself now and I know why I'm here. You sound like you've tried a lot of the same diets that I have. I remember the cabbage <laughs> soup diet and the, uh, yeah. Um, I, I have a question about one of those diets, though. I've never heard of HCG. What is HCG? HCG is really a hormone treatment. Uh, HCG is the pregnancy hormone. And what it tells the pregnant woman's body to do is unlock stored fat to use it, to burn it up, to nourish yourself and eat a very restricted caloric diet, including no fat for about 40 days. It's about 500 to 800 calories a day, high protein, a little bit of fruit, a little bit of veg. Uh, and then, and you do this and what it, uh, this works for people like me, even though people might scream in the comments, but it works for people like me because the results are fast. Mm. And you truly are, I weighed myself every day using a scale that measures body composition. And I truly was losing body fat and I was maintaining my muscle mass. There are a lot of naysayers and skeptics. However, I, if you're doing HCG right, you should never be hungry. I was never hungry. I did a round that one day that was 110 days. There was no, there were no days of eating 500 calories where I was hungry at all. I preserved my muscle mass. I lost body fat. And so for people with, I think it's a psychological, for people that don't have to do HCG, I would say skip it and do carnivore. But for somebody that it needs to see results fast in order to feel encouraged. It, it worked great for me for that. And I lost about 60 pounds on HCG a couple of summers ago. The problem was when I came off of it, I, this was when I started getting keto and then more toward carnivore. So I had the way of eating to get back into a sustainable rest of my life. The issue was that I still had this undealt with carb addiction. And when I came off of my last round, my sister uh, had gotten diagnosed with cancer. And she was my younger sister. And she got diagnosed with colon cancer and she lived in Washington state and my parents began taking care of her. This, uh, she and I had had a contentious relationship, but we were healing that now that she was sick. And I flew up there for a few weeks to help my parents take care of her. And a couple of things happened. I, of course, turned to foods I shouldn't have for comfort. Now they were keto, but I gained 20 pounds in a month. 
It was like nuts and cheese and keto treats. So I was, first of all, it was convenience food for all of the travel. And second of all, there was just stress, I'm sure that kept some weight on. But then there was also the comfort level of, of eating something sweet, uh, even just roasted nuts had a bit of a sweet flavor. I didn't understand how bad they were for me. Uh, that kind of thing. So um, I gained weight back and fast. And I learned an interesting phrase the other night when I was watching an interview about addiction. It was focused more on alcohol and narcotics. But I guess there's a saying in that community that says that while you are in recovery, your addiction is doing push-ups. And that, when I heard that, I thought, Okay, that explains a lot. And that explains a lot about if you're a carbohydrate addict, and then you're really good. And then you go off the rails. We go off the rails hard, harder than when you were just kind of eating crap before. And that was a wake up call for me to be ever vigilant about this, because that is what happened to me when my sister was sick. Um, and, uh, she did pass away and, uh, I did do emotional eating after that, like the last kind of cake that on her last birthday, one day I was home, back home here in Texas and felt feeling distraught. And I went to go get a piece of that cake and I got the cake and I ate the cake in my car. And for the moment of whatever chemical hit my brain, I felt better, but it did not bring her back. It didn't resolve my grief long-term. It didn't do any of the things that I had turned to it for. And because I had really committed to carnivore at that point, and then was experiencing a new level of intense emotions. I, I hadn't lost somebody that close to me before. So this was new for me, this level of intense emotion. I had gotten mad at my husband in the past and I had something called muffins of rage where if he made me angry, I would drive to the store and get a muffin and sit in my car and eat it <laughs> and feel like nobody can tell me not to. And I can sit in this car and do that and feel good for a minute. Uh, but those don't help either. They they don't help me not be, you know, mad at my husband. They didn't, that stuff didn't bring my sister back, didn't help me process grief, didn't do any of that. I I, uh, I decided to stop feeling shame about those things, though, and allow them. Well, first of all, I know this is counterintuitive, but I thought, you know what? Okay, they tasted good. They They're not good for me. There's no excuse. There's no reason that I can justify eating them. But instead of shame, I could be thankful that I had something delicious, but now it's time to brush them off my hands and move on. And, and just, you know, thanks for a few delicious bites, but I don't need that anymore. Once I realized, okay, I could have that kind of loving response toward myself that doesn't allow for a cheat, uh, but also isn't a taskmaster hanging over myself, then I was able to let go uh, some of the negative uh, emotions because I noticed that I was just caught in this cycle of wanting the food either as a reward or a comfort and then shame and then like positive emotion and then shame over and over again. And then the angry pile of clothes on the bedroom floor that don't fit that fit a month ago and how upsetting that is and wanting to hide when pictures are taken not wanting pictures taken with my sons uh even or hide you know hiding behind people all of those negative emotions i realized i needed to face those head on i could no longer turn to food even steak even butter for things the food isn't equipped to give me. And letting go of seeking those things allowed me to face, I guess, my demons head on and really unfold what's going on. Let go of things, 
that I can let go of, deal with things that need to be dealt with, accept some hard truths about myself, and resolve those. Uh, and that's to the benefit of me and to my family and to all of my relationships. And it also has the side benefit of I, I feel kinder toward other people because a lot of unhealthy responses to things we may be on the receiving end of, but truly they're just trying to cope. Well, first, let me just say I'm very sorry to hear about your sister. Thank you. Um, but on the flip side of that, I'm very happy to hear the expression muffins of rage. That would that that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's so interesting, especially the part about the uh your addictions doing push-ups. Um I I I certainly feel that myself, you know, when I've when I've given something up before and then I go back to it. You never just go back to it the same way. You always go back to it on steroids. You know, it's always, you know, if it was a donut a day before, it's suddenly a donut an hour, you know, I'm following that, you know. Um, can, can you give me a little bit of a timeline about the, the keto to carnivore thing and like, you know, kind of around the time that you discovered or your husband mentioned Jordan Peterson to you that day in the kitchen? Sure thing. Uh, I, I learned about keto itself and did the deep dive probably about four years ago, maybe five. Uh, it was, uh, I had been coming off of an HCG round, like I'd said, and uh, I, I did that. And then, and I tried that and I tried to strong arm my way through that uh, into COVID. COVID uh, was a disaster for me. Everybody's doing all this COVID baking. And now let me say, the way to make yourself less vulnerable to a virus is definitely not baking. And so uh, I, I fell into that a little bit, but then I, I stopped because I was alarmed that all of these people were doing the least healthy things for themselves to cope with a, a public health issue. So uh, but that's that's neither here nor there. I did gain quite a bit of weight, though, uh, during the lockdowns, and uh, I just became permissive with myself. And then um, coming out of COVID is when my sister got her diagnosis. And right, that was December of 2021. Right before that is when so fall probably of 2021 is when my husband mentioned about Jordan Peterson. So I was stepping toward carnivore at that time. Uh, it was like carnivore cheating, carnivore carb addiction, carnivore cheating, carnivore. Let's see if I can just eat nuts for a while. No nope. carnivore. Let me add way too much dairy, not realizing it's also inappropriate snacking. Carnivore mistake, carnivore mistake, carnivore mistake is how that was for quite a long time. I really got serious about it early this year. Still had some stumbles, still had cheats, uh, uh, and that kind of thing. However, beginning of July, I... Uh, joined Kelly Hogan's, one of her little uh, support groups, an hour where you meet an hour a week, and she gives a lot of additional information. And she does encourage tracking. And I listened to your interview with Klaus, where you talk about that. And I, I thought, you know, I agree with that, but I want to add a little bit of color to that concept for someone like me at a certain point in my journey. I did no tracking at first, and I do think that's how sh people should start because you really have to get in touch with your satiety hormones. You really have to, even if you gain weight, like many people do at first, including Kelly Hogan, I, I think you really got to restore your nourishment. Most people probably go into carnivore not well nourished from all of this previous dieting or, you know, whatever, but... Um, I do think no tracking at first, but then 
I realized I was, I was not really aware or being honest with myself, perhaps about everything I was eating. And I had absolutely no idea what my fat to protein ratios were. And I was not losing weight to, I know that we have pauses and our body heals and that kind of a thing, but it was getting kind of ridiculous. And, and I don't have any autoimmune disorders or anything else deep that my body's needing to heal from. And I thought something's off. So in Kelly Hogan's group, she does encourage tracking and movement every day movement. Um, and uh, it's not that exercise helps you lose weight, but it does help your body body systems operate better. And it seems like that might have an indirect effect for some people on reaching their optimal weight. And I am one of those people. So I began tracking and I increased my activity and I made sure that my protein to fat ratios were refined. And then the added benefit of that was I committed to myself to log every single thing I put in my mouth. So there was absolutely no wiggle room for cheating because there it is in the app, anything I eat. And I lost about seven pounds in two weeks doing that. And I thought, okay, so the answer may or may not be tracking, but the answer definitely is being honest with yourself. And if you track in order to be honest with yourself, I would say that's a good end goal. I will not always track. I do think the ultimate goal is to not become obsessed with the numbers, um, but to live your life. And so while I am dealing with the hard mental work of the carb addiction, of being honest with myself, I'll continue to track. And then as I slowly am able to trust myself more and trust my satiety hormones more, then I will let go of that and, and get on with the rest of my life. From July until now, um, you've lost seven pounds. Yeah, yeah. What other what other things have you noticed? Whether it's from July or or this year since you've been doing carnivore um, outside of weight loss, I've noticed uh, more joy around my food and less confusion, less stress, less pressure. Uh, I have. I don't have to worry about whether what I'm eating is good for me when I'm eating on carnivore. I can be confident in that. I have noticed, uh, now I just got my blood work done. My thyroid is a little bit low. So I had not noticed the bump in energy that a lot of, well, no, that's not true. I did notice a bump in energy that I'm still more sluggish than I think. And then I got my full blood panel done and my thyroid is a little bit low. So I'm going to see my doctor on Thursday uh, to take care of that. But I think that's really the last missing puzzle piece is getting the thyroid in order. Um, and uh, But beyond that, I've noticed that I don't sunburn, which is a thing everybody's talking about. When I walk the dogs, it's an hour in the Texas sun, and then I'm out in the sun for hours on Saturday at a market. And uh, I don't, uh, I tan well with no sunburn uh, and no new weird markings on my skin. Uh, that's true. My skin tone um, is greatly improved. Um, and anxiety, I've I've noticed a reduction in anxiety for sure. In fact, that might be the biggest thing, the reduction in anxiety. I, I had a lot of anxiety. And now I would say, aside from responses to regular human stresses, the unnecessary anxiety has greatly diminished. That's that's interesting, um, especially regarding the anxiety. So when you talk about normal day-to-day -day stresses, we all get those kind of things. Um, has your has your reaction? So your anxiety has has reduced, but has your reaction to those normal day to day stresses changed at all? Yes, 
Yes. For example, I no longer need the muffins of rage. <laughs> uh, and uh, I am uh, now when I say I would get mad at my husband or he would make me mad or whatever. He's just a good husband to be in himself. Uh, and uh, I'm l much less reactive to, to things that would normally have made me even angry that shouldn't have that shouldn't have god bless him i should probably apologize <laughs> um but uh yeah so th things that are just interacting with people with my my sons are 22 and 19 plenty of opportunity for them to set me off over the years uh but i'm much more even healed with them level-headed with them and with my husband uh and with strangers with neighbors the people that might generally spark frustration i just don't get that way really at all anymore nice nice when you <laughs> when you mentioned most muffins of rage that time i'm kind of thinking well were the muffins for eating or were the muffins for throwing at people and <laughs> <laughs> Well, come to think of it, I should have bought two, one for each thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what is a uh, day of eating like for you, especially since you've been um, in uh, Kelly Hogan's group since uh, July, uh, since the beginning of July? How, how has your eating been? I have converted happily from a breakfast skipper to a breakfast eater. Mm-hmm. Most days I do two meals a day. If I have a very busy day, like today was busy, so it was one meal. I got all the calories in at once. Um, but most days it's two meals a day. I really love simplicity. So most days I'm happiest if I have three uh, burger patties that are 75-25. And... <laughs> I'll be very specific, 11 shrimp uh, and uh, a tablespoon of butter is a perfect day for me. Wow. Sometimes I'll reduce one of the burger patties. I might add one slice of cheese, but I really try to limit the dairy and I'll make up those macros in other ways. But I'm, I've been a foodie in the past and it's too stressful and it's not good for my digestion and I don't like it. And so these days I like to find two or three combinations of the right macros for me and rotate those. I do. I did notice that I feel better when I cut out the eggs. I did. I noticed after I bought a bunch of eggs that I felt better when I cut them out. I noticed I feel better if I don't eat bacon. Um, so I'm taking a break from eggs and bacon right now. Uh, and really just going with the, the sh I felt better once I incorporated the shrimp and or salmon a couple of times a week. I felt better when I reduced the dairy to not every day and no more than one or maybe two slices of cheese and no heavy whipping cream. Those are things I was all reluctant to let go of, but I, I really just had to admit those needed to go. Uh, so so that's what it's like it's just mostly beef and shrimp mm. nice so um that example you gave me of the three burger patties 11 shrimp and butter is is that one of the two meals or is that that's the total of the the, the two meals that's together the, that's the full meal i mean sorry the full day so if i like that was my omad today um, and if I feel hungry later, I will just eat a little more butter. Mm. Uh, so right now that from, I'm only five feet tall and that's about 1500 calories right there for me. I know about calories and I agree about calories. I'm only using the term calories to refer to a bulk of energy that I'm taking in. Uh, I, I do agree with really everybody in our space that, is, you know, our, my body doesn't know what a calorie is. But at some point I had to measure the food on my plate so I knew where to start. I don't let the calories limit me. I start there. So that's about 1,500 calories. When I have it 
two meals a day. I'll have the two burger patties in the morning so I can cook them up quickly and then get the dogs out for a walk. And I do have them with coffee. I drink coffee. I'm, I unashamedly drink coffee. I'm never giving it up. You'll have to pry it from my cold, dead hands. Mm-hmm. Sorry to all the carnivores that think I'm not carnivore by doing that. But this is Donna's carnivore and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> In any case, so then I'll I'll have the butter and shrimp and the other patty for, for the second meal of the day, which is usually mid afternoon. I do try not to eat past four o'clock when possible. Mm. That's that's another shift, and that may be responsible for part of this seven pounds that I was able to lose in you know the second half of July. Um, I had not weighed myself in many months until July 13th of this year because I was too afraid of the number because I had lost so much weight and then gained it and couldn't really lose it. I couldn't bear to step on the scale. And then I woke up on July 13th and I thought, you're, you're 54. (laughs) You can get, it's just a 12 by 12 piece of electronic equipment. Just get on it. Just know where you stand. And so I did, it wasn't as bad as I thought. And I've been keeping track ever since, but in any case, back to the question. So that's how those meals uh, sort out. Hmm. And uh, is your husband doing this with you? Um, Or is he kind of eating the same way he always has? Right now. He's eating mostly the same way he always has, but he is eating more meat. Now, he is an interesting guy. He's 64, and he's a yoga teacher. And it's so crazy to me. I hate exercise, and it's so crazy to me that I'm married to a yoga teacher, but here we are. And he's a very good yoga teacher, and he is in, to look at him, he is in fantastic shape. He's in fantastic shape. He eats a lot of fruit and he eats a lot of grains and he eats a lot of vegetables and he loves them. But I was starting to show him some Dr. Berry information and I showed him Dr. Berry's conversation with Amy Berger, who wrote a book uh, and Chris, I can't think of his last name right now. um, Chris Palmer, I think they both wrote books about brain health and dementia And my husband is dealing with his elderly father with a little bit of uh, dementia right now. And now my husband's concern is preserving his own brain health and taking steps toward that. Uh, He uh, has a pained look on his face when we discuss this because he says it is so hard for me to let go of everything I've believed about food my whole life. And he even made oatmeal for himself the other day. And on the oatmeal, he put maple syrup and heavy whipping cream. And he was pouring the heavy whipping cream. And he said, is this going to give me a heart attack? And I said, no, the maple syrup is going to give you the heart attack. And he knows it, but it still surprised him that I said that. And so he and my 19-year-old son are thinking about doing a 30-day lion diet challenge in September. And I've told him, I'll cook all the steaks. I'll get everything ready. I'll rotate cuts. I'll rotate ruminant meats. Um, I'll do all of that if you want to do it. Uh, Just be prepared for some discomfort in the transition. So he's currently, he's eating all the summer fruit. I would get so fat if I ate like him. Last night he had ravioli and berries I mean I mean and cherry I mean a lot of fruit a lot of pasta and you know he's he still has this what 30 inch waist or whatever so um anyway he he can burn it off but what he doesn't know he can do is forestall cognitive cognitive decline into old age and so that's what he is beginning to be concerned with yeah um when you when you're talking about what he ate yesterday, like ravioli and fruit and all this kind of thing, I mean that's just like that's obesity in a bowl for me, you know. Like I can just I I, I can just imagine it. Wow, it probably tastes good, but that I, I would just turn into a blimp. 
I, yes. And, you know, he will eat blueberries and that kind of thing. But when I eat blueberries, I, I binge. I mean, I know mm. they're even like a lower carb fruit, but I can't stop eating them. Mm. And uh, so I, I right now can't, can't do fruit, but he stood at the sink last night and I don't know, I don't know how many cherries he ate, but it was not a small amount. And, uh, you know, he just eats so much fruit, but again, he teaches several yoga sessions a day. He's highly active. Um, he, his whole focus is, is his physique and working out with other people and all of that. So he, his body probably, uh, burns glucose pretty fast once it enters his system, unlike me. So again, I don't think he would ever be obese. Um, I would be obese in five seconds, but he could never be obese. It's just the cognitive health uh, that he's looking toward. So have you had any friends who have said, what's going on? Why are you eating lettuce? <laughs> um, a couple of them. Interestingly, one friend of mine told me <laughs> she preferred me when I was overweight, uh, when I weighed more. And I thought that's such an interesting thing to say. <laughs> uh, and another friend of mine messaged me because I've always had a health focus of just misguided. I've always been kind of crunchy and, you know, that kind of thing, just, just misguided about what health food actually was. And a friend of mine um, texted me and asked if I, there were any liver cleanse packages that I could recommend. And I said, the only thing I can recommend is taking away everything in your diet except meat. And I think she was expecting me to recommend supplements because I cannot tell you how many hundreds of dollars worth of supplements we have in this house. And I used to recommend supplements all the time. But right now I'm, ta I'm taking hardly any except for electrolytes and a little bit of iodine. And she didn't reply to me. I think I don't think she was mad or anything like that. She's still my friend, but I think she just she must have thought I'd gone off the rails. I think she thinks I'm crazy, which is okay. I'll see her in person at some point, and we'll talk about it some more. So, uh, and I do have friends that are still insistent and argue with me about calories in, calories out. And that perhaps the only reason carnivore works is because it de facto restricts your calories. Um, so I do have friends that are arguing with me about that, but they are well-intentioned, but it is, and I see it in my husband's face when I talk to him, he's a willing listener to this, even a willing person. It's just so hard to believe because our only framework is the last hundred years. We don't have direct exposure to food thinking from hundreds or thousands of years ago. We only have exposure to what's normal eating over the past few decades as prepackaged foods, as uh, the Kellogg family, which you have talked about, began to put its tentacles into every nook and cranny of um, influential food food guidelines uh, and how badly that misled people. Uh, that's what we think is normal. People think the phrase balanced diet is normal and you should strive for that. Uh, people think um, you should have one of every little thing on your plate, but there's no, where did we even get that? Where did we get that? Uh, we, we got that from people who don't have our best interests at heart. So I understand why they think this way. And I don't mind people thinking I'm crazy. Um, I also don't need to convert anyone. I don't mind planting crazy seeds and letting people think about them. My grandfather, both of my grandparents in the 80s said some pretty insane things to me that have now all come to pass. <laughs> and so I thought they were nuts for years and they've both uh, moved on from this earth now. Uh, but they were right about so many things I thought were nuts. And so I thought, you know what, I, I'm not afraid to be nuts. And 
Somebody doesn't have to have their mind changed right in front of me. But if in three years, five years, they think maybe she was on to something, then I've done my job. Yeah. And it's uh, the people that aren't afraid to be nuts. They literally and figuratively push against the grain. And, uh, you know, over time, that's how change happens. So I think it's important that we're all out there talking about it, whether people think we're we're crazy or not, you know, because every everything starts this way. Every change starts this way. Yeah. As yeah. soon as I hear somebody call somebody else nuts, I'm like, let me I, tell me more. <laughs> mm. I want to know more. This person you think is crazy. Maybe they are, but I'd like to be the one that hears them, that listens to them and makes up my own mind about it. Because, mm. yeah, calling someone crazy or calling someone nuts is really just a way of shutting down the discussion, right? So Correct. I'm, not, com- I'm not comfortable talking about li- this. Let's just shut it down. Basically. Correct. Mm. Yeah. So um, is is this it for you? Is it Carnival Forever? I believe so. Uh, I don't see that I could reach a point where I can begin to allow some confusion in my daily life with regard to what I eat. And this really came with the realization that I am a carb addict. And now, could I eat a carbohydrate in the future and be okay? Yes. Could I say, I'm going to start adding this into my diet? No, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Uh, and also, this is easy. And it, I mean, my husband is self employed. Uh, I run a couple of side gigs. This is easy. It's food is not my entertainment now, food is not my source of anything else now. I cook the food to nourish me and then I clean the pan and then I'm done. I don't know why I would go back to a life where food starts to serve a purpose broader than it's intended to serve, where it would take up more of my life, my time, my energy, my focus. I'd rather just stick this way where I can be assured that every bite I put into my mouth is one that is going to nourish me, is going to keep me on track, and is not going to be something it isn't intended for. Wow, that's very nicely said. So, Donna, um, you you run a YouTube channel. Um, yeah. Could you talk a little bit about that and any other social media that you have that people can get in contact with you? Sure thing. I am Texas Donna on YouTube. And I first made a couple of videos and couldn't believe that I was putting myself out there like that. I I haven't told any of my friends even that I have this YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm a little bit afraid that they will find it in any case. Uh, but I've now been operating it for a few months and have found a little tribe there. So if, if any of my story here resonates with anybody, I would love for you to join me over there and comment with any of your experiences. And I am on Instagram and I, my Instagram handle is in the, my information on my YouTube channel. I, I think it's Donna Texas Rose on Instagram. Uh, and then I use Twitter a little bit, but mostly just to put out a tweet that one of my videos is up. I have like no followers on Twitter. Twitter. So, or now it's X now. I think it's called X whatever it is, whatever Elon's done with it now, it's a new thing. Uh, but, you know, I'm not really on that very much. But Instagram is a little bit of my personal life and and then uh, health-related stuff, nutrition-related stuff, that kind of a thing, and then YouTube. Donna, thank you so much for spending time with us today. It's been a pleasure hearing your story. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate it. Guys, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.